Hi boys and girls, happy Monday. Today is um, day two at OTES um, and if we were at school today, you would be having music. So um, if you would like to do a music activity, I know on our bingo board today, we put down there um, a song of the continents. If you wanted to um, sing that today or you can find your own songs to sing, um, that would be kind of fun, and you can share those with me. Um, today I'm going to read to you a story called Albert. This is Albert. It's written by Donna Jo Napoli, illustrated by Jim LaMarche, and the publisher is Silver Whistle. Let's see what this book is all about. I think it's going to be about something about birds. We'll see. Albert sat at his table and drank tomato juice and listened to the noises of the morning. The people in the apartment above clattered downstairs and out the door on their way to work. You see that? Oops. The dog next door barked hello to everyone who passed. Children giggled on their way to school. These were good noises. Albert stood up and worked his hand out between the grill work over the window. He wanted to check the weather. The garbage truck rumbled by. That wasn't a good noise. Albert shook his head. Too cold, he said. He shut the window and rubbed his hand to warm them. Then he sat down and read the comic strip. The next day, Albert ate lunch and listened to the noises of midday. The mailman sang as he slung his pack over his shoulder. The snack vendor shouted out the day's special, golden bean cakes. The flower lady laughed with her customers. Good noises today, very good noises. Albert went to the window and reached his hand toward the maple tree. How was the weather today? Two men walked past arguing. Now that wasn't a good noise. Too damp, Albert shut the window and wiped his hands on his trousers. Then he took out a pack of cards and did card tricks. day Albert said too hot and the next day too breezy. Albert told himself that he knew that when the weather was right just right he'd put on his hat and go for a walk and every day the weather seemed good at first but after a moment more it turned out the weather was never just right. So Albert listened to baseball games on the radio and cut pictures out of magazines and wrote postcards he never mailed. Hmm, I wonder why the, why the weather has to be just right. Hmm. Then one sunny day, Albert stuck his hand out the window and the next thing he knew, a twig appeared in it. Albert looked around in surprise. A cardinal flew by and, dripped and dropped in another twig. And then there were two cardinals, a bright red male and a brown yellow female and both of them were dropping twig after twig. Albert watched, dumbfounded, as his now cupped hand filled to the brim. The cardinals fluttered and, f and fussed and poked and pulled. They heaped grasses into the center of the twigs. Finally, the female shaped the nest to fit her breast and she settled in. Hmm, this is right outside his window. Albert stared at her. Um, excuse me, but my arm's not a branch. But the cardinal didn't even look at him. She flew off, leaving a nest of four tiny eggs in Albert's hand. With his freak hand, Albert scratched his head. If he pulled his arm in, twisting to get it back through the grill work, the nest would surely fall. So he stood there. Uh-oh, what do you think he's gonna do? How's he gonna fix this problem? The mother cardinal returned. Albert stood with his arm out the window. Miss Cardinal, I think you I think you picked a poor spot to build a nest. But the cardinal just whistled and fell asleep. 
That night, Albert slept standing up. What would you do if you were in that situation? Would you stay there like Albert did and sleep standing up or would you do something else? The next day, the mother cardinal kept the eggs warm while the father cardinal fed her. Albert rubbed his aching neck. Ugh, listen, I hate to disappoint you two, but I'm not sure this is going to work. The cardinals looked at Albert. Then they preened each other. That night, Albert slept standing up again. The third day, Albert rotated his shoulder to get the kinks out like this. The mother bird flew to the ground and pecked at a grub. Albert took a good look at the eggs for the first time. Perfect sea blue ovals with red brown spots. The father bird flew down and chattered at the mother bird. She flew back to the eggs and sat on them. Pretty eggs, said Albert gently. The cardinal, cardinal gave a quizzical look. Our beautiful eggs. One day after Albert stood the nest, day after day, Albert stood the nest in his hand. He began each day by watching the birds. Then he looked around. Once a plane roared overhead, Albert's first urge was to pull his arm in and shut the window, but the nest kept him there. So he watched the plane till it went out of sight, and soon he found himself dreaming about the places those passengers were going to visit. And then he smiled. Once a man and a woman came out of a building yelling. They turned their backs on each other and both walked out in a huff. Albert wanted so much to pull his arm in and shut the window. But the nest was there, so he stayed put. About an hour later, the man appeared from one direction and the woman appeared from another. Each held a wrapped present. They laughed and hugged. Albert dreamed about what, mu about what might be in those presents and he smiled again. There he is up there. Albert didn't only dream. Whenever the mother cardinal hopped off the nest, even for a moment, Albert breathed his hot breath onto the eggs to keep them warm. And once, when the mother cardinal was away, a cat walked along the ledge beneath Albert's arm. It flicked its tail and looked up curiously. It crouched, ready to spring. Albert screeched. The cat ran off. Albert chuckled. There he goes, keeping them warm. A week passed, and one morning, when Albert opened his mouth, he peeped. The father cardinal looked at him. The father cardinal looked at him and asked, but Albert peeped insistently. The cardinal flew off. He returned with the beetle. Albert's wrinkled nose wrinkled his nose and jerked his head away. The cardinal ate the beetle. Then he flew off again. This time, he returned with a blackberry. Albert ate it gracefully, gratefully. From that day on, Albert peeped and the father cardinal fed him blackberries and Albert smiled at the noises all around him. Days passed. It's the cardinal with the bug. He's feeding that blackberry to Albert. What is Albert trying to be right now? He can't move. The daddy cardinal is feeding him almost like he was a little bird as well. On the 12th morning, Albert spied a crack in one of the eggs. He put his face to the grill work so he could see everything perfectly. The second egg cracked and the third and the fourth. The baby birds pecked their way out, wet and scraggly. Good work, Albert smiled. Welcome. You see him? On the 12th day, 12 days he's been standing there. Wow. In the next few weeks, the mother and father cardinals fed their broad, including Albert, who, leaned, who, who learned to love seeds and berries. And even eventually he liked beetles. 
The mother sat on Albert's wrist and sang her joy. The father flew to the top of the maple and sang his pride. The parents whistled to the, to the fledglings, encouraging them to test their wings. Soon, the first fledgling left the nest. Then the second, then the third. But one stayed. He hopped up Albert's arm and pecked at his nose. He looked worried. He looked worriedly, worried, Lee. <laughs> excuse me, at the ground. Go for it, birdie, said Albert. Fly. The fledgling looked down again. He kept his wings close to his body. Hmm. He seems a little nervous or scared. He's probably really high up. Albert stuck out his hat in front of the fledgling. Come on, he said. Give it a try. Fledgling jumped into the hat. Albert tossed him up lightly. He fluttered a little and landed safely back in the hat with a peep. Albert tossed him higher. He fluttered a lot and landed back in the hat with a loud chirp. Albert tossed him high, high, high. The fledgling looked around and spread his wings. He flew to the maple tree and whistled. Albert smiled and whistled back. The nest sat empty in Albert's hand. He drew his arm in through the grill work and the nest fell. Albert looked at the grass and the trees and the sky. He listened to laughter nearby, a good noise, and the siren of an ambulance far off, a bad noise. And Albert knew now that both were part of, his, were part of this big, wonderful world. He put his face up to the grill work and felt the wind and the sun on his cheeks. Mm, just right, he said. Albert smoothed his hair and brushed off his hat. After so long, he hardly looked himself. He went outside for a walk. Remember in the beginning of the story how Albert would only go outside for a walk if the weather was nice? Just right, and it's what he said. And now he's outside. Now Albert walks often, and sometimes, just sometimes, when no one's looking, he flies. Wow, what a wonderful story. What a great book. So in the beginning, Albert was um, a little, it seemed like he was a little nervous to go outside um, because there was a lot of, of bad noises that he heard. And if there was a bad noise, he wouldn't go outside. And now at the end, he realizes that you have to have bad noises and good noises. They all make up our own world. That's what he said. So he learned that through the process of being able to hold that nest there and being stuck there in that one spot, he was exposed to the whole world, the good and the bad. Um, and I think that's something that's really important for us to remember. And also, this book kind of reminds me of the day that we're having outside today, where it's so nice out that um, I think that we're going to start to be seeing some birds building their nests soon. And that makes me happy. All right. I hope you have a great Monday. I can't wait to hear from you guys um, and how you're doing on your bingo boards. Um, I'll be checking in a little bit later this week, and I'll see you tomorrow for another book. Bye, guys.